Up to this point, we've been working mainly with single view apps or apps with just one view controller screen. Over the next couple of videos, we're going to take a look at apps that have more than one screen and ways to navigate between those screens. So I have a single view here, and I'm just going to add a couple objects so we can uh, differentiate between the two or the several screens we have. I'm going to put a label, and I'm going to drag it on here. I'm not going to worry about constraints at this point since this is not an auto layout exercise, but obviously in your apps that is an important consideration. So I'm going to put view controller one and just move that in the center. And I'm also going to add a button from the object library. Just drag that over here. And I'm going to just call this go to view controller two. Okay, so I've got a label and a button. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this over a little bit. And I'm going to add another view controller. And I can, I can do that from my object library. I'll type view controller. And I can just drag that right in here. And you can see it gives me another screen. I'm going to go ahead and hide this for a second just to get a little more real estate here so I can see these two. Let me quickly add a label to this one. I'll call it view controller two. And I, let's not have a button for right now. I want to in a little bit. So the easiest way to create a um, connection between these two is by manually creating what's called a segue. In order to create that segue, I'm going to hold the control key down and go to this button here and just click and drag to my next view controller. And you can see that it's highlighted blue, which indicates that's a legitimate destination. When I let go, I can see a number of different types of segues. The one, the, well, the two that we'll use most of all are show and present modally. For right now, I'm just going to choose show as a segue type. And you can see once I did that, I have this connection here, which shows that this view controller leads to this view controller by this segue. This is the, the image of a segue. So now if I go ahead and run my app, so I have a view controller one. If I click on go to view controller two, you can see the next view slid up from the bottom to the top. Okay, let's go ahead and stop this. And let's add a third view controller. I'm just gonna move these over. Actually, let me just, oops, too small. That's about right. Let me add one more view controller. I'll drag that over. Let's go ahead and add a label to this one. Call it view controller, whoops, three. And let's add another button to my view controller two. And I'll call it go to view controller three. I'll create another segue by using control drag. And this time I'll do present modally. And let's see if there's a difference between those. You can see the image in the center of the segue is different. Let's go ahead and run this. When I click on go to view controller two, notice the animation comes up. When I do go to view controller three, I get the same sort of animation. So both show and present modally did the same animation. One thing you may notice at this point is that there's really no way to go back. I'm at view controller three, but I have no way to get back to view controller two or even one. So let's go ahead and add some code that'll let us do that. So we're gonna go back to view controller one. And one thing to point out at this time, actually I'm gonna show this again. If I click on my view controller one, and click on this button here, which is the identity inspector. I'm gonna click on this view controller 
uh, button here, and you see that the class for this view controller is view controller. That corresponds to this Swift file here. So the code I write in this view controller file controls what I see here. These two view controllers, view controller two and view controller three, have no custom classes. So if we wanted to write code to, to control those, we'd have to add new Swift files. So for right now, we're just going to worry about view controller one. So I'm going to go ahead to my view controller Swift file, and I'm going to add a quick method. Usually our view did load stays at the top, so I'm going to put this one underneath. So I'm going to do IB action function unwind to view controller one. And I'm going to create an unwind segue is my label. And the type is UI storyboard segue. And so I've created a, a blank function here. The most important thing is this UI storyboard segue type. Notice we're creating what's called an unwind segue. And an unwind segue is a way to go back on a previously existing segue. So this is going to be how we get back to view controller one. The key thing that Xcode looks for is this type here, a UI storyboard segue. The name of the function doesn't matter as long as it sees this type. So let's go ahead and go back to our main storyboard. I'm going to go to my view controller three and I'm going to add a button. Go to my object library, click on a button, and I'm going to call this one back to, whoops, back to VC1. Now instead of dragging a segue back to view controller one, I'm going to use that unwind segue method that I created. So I'm going to hold the control key down and I'm going to drag up to this exit button here, which is this red square. And you can see that it shows me my unwind to VC1 method. So it's my only choice. So if I click on it, it's going to create an unwind segue. So let's go ahead and run that to test it. So let me go to view controller two, view controller three. If I go back to view controller one, notice that the animation went down this time, indicating that I'm going back. It's an unwind segue. So that's one way to go back uh, in, your, in your code. A somewhat more effective way, if you have many screens, is to use what's called a navigation controller. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. I'm going to click on my first view controller and select that. And I'm going to go to Editor, Embed in Navigation Controller. Now let's see what happens. Notice that I get this new thing called a Navigation Controller, which is points to my View Controller 1. And notice this is my entry point indicator. It's now at the Navigation Controller. The other thing you should notice is at the top, there's this Navigation Bar. And you can see that I have it here. And on my second view controller, I have a back button. So if I, let me go ahead and stop this. Let's run this this time. Let's go ahead and run it again and see what that changed. So if I go to view controller two, notice that this time, let's go back one more time. This time the animation was side to side and not up and down. So let me go to View Controller 2 and go back. So that's what the show segue looks like when you're embedded in a navigation controller. And the way you can think of navigation controllers is as a stack of views on one on top of the other. Uh, another analogy you see a lot of times is dishes. So if you put away, a, let's say, a stack of plates in the cabinet and you put them in one by one, the, f the last plate you put in is usually the first one you take out. And you can think of view controllers in that same way. There's a stack of views. So first in, last out. So let me go ahead and try that one more time. If I go to view controller three, again, since it was presented modally, it went up. So let me go back to view controller one, and it uh, went back that way. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and look at, let me stop this for a second. Let's look at this navigation bar up here. And I'm going to click on the Attributes Inspector. I can give a, a title and a back button uh, I text for my navigation bar. And if I do it for this one, I see even more options. So this is my general navigation bar. I can change the color, um, title text attributes. I encourage you to go ahead and look at, at these different things that you can see. One thing to notice in the document outline, in my first view controller, view controller one, I have a navigation item, but I don't have a navigation item in either of the other two. So this one has no navigation item, and this doesn't have a navigation bar at all. If I want these other two to have navigation bars, expand these, let's go ahead and add those from the object library. So I can type navigation. I can drag those to here. Now let's do the same for the third one. And notice that they each have a title. So if I give if I give my first view controller one a title, we'll call this um, first. Notice the title shows up, and notice the back button changed to the title of my first view controller. If I click on this navigation title, I'll change it to second. Notice that the second doesn't show up. I'm going to move this title here out of the navigation bar so you can see it. And then in this one, I'll change the title to third. And now they each have a title. Another thing you might notice is that in this navigation bar, there's no back button to my, my previous view controller. And the reason is the segue. At the beginning, we chose present modally. We're going to go back and change that to show. So I'm going to click on the segue. And under kind, I'm going to choose show. And you see that now it has this back button. Let's go ahead and see how this works. As I run it. Notice that now, because I've, at, I've embedded these in a the navigation controller, I have easy ways to go back and forth between my views. So that's a lot more handy. One other handy use of a navigation bar is to add what are called bar button items. So let's go ahead and add one of those. Let's do bar button. And you can see it's here. I'm going to actually drag it to my third view controller, and I'm going to place it in my navigation bar. So you can see this navigation item here. You notice that the item button doesn't show up. Let me move it outside of this navigation item, and now it pops up. Notice that when I click on the item, I have the option up here under a system item. I can choose one of these pre-built items. So like, for example, bookmarks, it'll change the bookmarks icon. Uh, if I do organize, it'll change that icon. I'm going to leave it. Whoops. I'm going to leave it custom, and it says item. I'm going to say, I'm going to have it say pop to go back to that first view controller. And I'm going to, I'm going to wire it the same way I did for this button. So I'm going to click system and drag it, and then use my unwind segue. And I can delete this button since I don't need it anymore. Let's go ahead and stop this and run it to see how that works. Go ahead and two, two, three. Now I have this bar button item. If I hit pop, and it goes back to view controller one. The last thing we're going to talk about in this video is how to pass information back and forth to different uh, view controllers. Oftentimes, you'll need to get information from one view controller to the next. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. So I'm going to create a text field that I can just use to get some information. And I'm going to put it in this view controller here. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this text field set the title uh, for the second view controller. So let's go ahead and I'm going to use my assistant editor so I can see both of these. Make sure I'm selected my first view controller. You can see I have my unwind segue. I'm going to create an outlet up top. I'm going to call this um, title field. Everything else should be fine and connect it. So in order to pass information, I'm going to use a special built-in function called prepare for segue. So I can do this by going prepare for segue, and it's the second one with the UI storyboard segue. If I hit enter, it puts in the information for me. I'm going to override the, the generic function, and I'm just going to add some code to it. And so for this one, I'm going to use segue dot destination, and again, that's the destination of whatever the segue leads to, and the navigation item dot title. So all I'm saying is the title of the navigation item at the destination of the segue is going to equal my text field, whoops, title field, sorry, I call it title field, title field dot text. So again, the title of the navigation item at the destination of the of this segue, just set it equal to whatever is in this button here, or this text field here. Let's go ahead and run this. So I will call this, um, I'll call it Brian. If I go to view controller two, I can see that the title is whatever was passed. If I go back, and make it segue, it sets the title to whatever is, is, is in that text field. So again, that's a very simple way to pass information. We'll look at more complicated ways later. So navigation controllers are one way to set up a multiple views. And in the next video, we'll look at tab bar controllers.